Crossroads Media. I cannot stop thinking about this baseball team in the middle of spring training. What Nick Castellanos did today, this afternoon, was beautiful. Bryson Stott had three hits. Bryson Stott is unbelievable at working professional at-bats. He falls behind 0-1. He falls behind 0-2. But he knows how to perfectly stay involved. Great eye. Works the corners. Doesn't chase anything. Works back into about 2-2. Two and two. And then what do you know? He's driving the baseball the other way. He's putting the ball throughout the gaps on an 0-1 count. This kid is electric and oh, by the way, he's making outstanding, ridiculous plays where he's jumping 6,000 feet. Just when Alec Boehm has an inning where he actually did a good job fielding a ground ball. And when he got up there too, you go, wow, wow. <laughs> it's a shame. The guy who's about to steal your damn job and you might actually be shipped out of town because of how great Bryson Stott is doing right now, that kid, yeah, he matched what you did and even added more by showing you what he's capable of doing with the bat in his hand. This kid just looks comfortable and poised, and he looks to be a stud. I'm all about it right now. Now, I understand. Broads, calm down. How many times have you been fooled before about a prospect? You're right, but what was my message all along? I I just know that we are in a different era of Phillies baseball when Dave Dombrowski is at the helm and he knows the game and he makes decisions because he has been around the block and he has built organizations before Detroit, the Boston Red Sox. He didn't build the Boston Red Sox. That was more of a, okay, go plug and play and bang. What do you know? But the idea behind it is Dave Dombrowski knows how to do it in many different ways. He's not just a one skill set type of guy. He's a baseball guy. And that's why you're going to see this organization change its ways starting now. We are in a new, fresh, fresh, how do you do with this lineup? Think about what Castellanos did today when he sent the ball 6 billion feet into the world. Okay, or out of the planet, maybe is the better way to describe it. You know, Bryce Harper, and uh, this is... More than just a Bryce Harper thing. Bryce Harper does so many damn things. But it's just the knowledge of what other pitchers are going to have to deal with. Two outs. Bryce Harper's up. Spring training. You kind of think, ah, you know, two outs. Work a full count. Works a full count. Grinds the A-B. Gets a single in the right field. With two outs. Like, ah, Bryce, or whatever. Now you have to face Castellanos. Then Reese Hoskins is going to be following him. And JT. And I'm thinking about, in my mind, my vision, what I see this lineup being built out to be, which is Gene Segura in the two-hole. So, you know, when Bryce Harper, say there's two outs in the inning, Bryce Harper grinds an A-B, makes you really work very hard out there on the bump. It results in him getting on first base because Bryce Harper knows what he's doing. And now you have to see Castellanos, Reese Hoskins, JT. It's, it's going to be insane. Good luck. It's going to be living hell for some of these guys. Now, when you look around the New York Mets, if it's DeGrom, if it's Max Scherzer, sure, they know how to counter. They're dogs. They're wired differently as well. So there are some selective group of people who may have some sort of success because they're asinine and they don't make any sort of sense and they're the best to ever do it on the mouth. Majority, though, oh, no, I prefer tomorrow night, guys. Oh, what's that? (laughs) It's game one of the series? It's going to be a long couple days. (laughs) Oh, what's that? Uh, Oh, Broach is going to be screaming his damn head off at the top of the Citizens Bank (laughs) Park. Yeah, maybe. Opening day, I will be. Speaking of opening day, by the way, this is a perfect time to let everybody know out there that on Broach Media, Twitter.com or the Twitter app, I don't know how many people utilize the desktop for their Twitter, although I do, and I think that there's actually a lot of people who do, so maybe I'm wrong, but I feel there is. Anyway. The moral of the story and the most important details is pinned to the top of the profile at Broads Media. You can retweet the tweet that's pinned, follow the account, and on April 1st, you have an opportunity to win 
Two tickets to opening day. Citizens Bank Park, day one of this massive lineup that's going to rake and hit bombs basically every single at-bat. Yeah, that Citizens Bank Park with this roster right now will be playing, and you can be there. Twitter, at Broads Media, pinned to the top of the profile. File, follow the account and retweet it, and that's all you need to do to enter. It's a no-brainer. I'm excited for all of you out there. And there's a little rumor that there might be another giveaway for a second pair of tickets next week as well. So just be prepared to get your ass over there and do what you need to do. So Castellanos was down 0-2, battles, makes it a full count, puts it in the gap for a double. JT Real Muto's given us hustle doubles. Br- Bryce Harper a couple games ago against the Toronto Blue Jays, two bombs, three total hits. It's scary. Reese Hoskins has showed what he's able to do. It is a ridiculous thought what this lineup is capable of doing in the regular season. I'm not overreacting. I'm not pretending as if this is the pitching that's going to be on display in the in the regular season. But the difference is, the way that the franchise is built right now, you actually have major league boppers. I mentioned this before, but Jankowski, Nick Maton, Luke Williams, and the Phillies, with all due respect, what are we doing here to tweet out some sort of tweet for Luke Williams thanking him for everything? Was there a nice moment where he had a walk-off? Absolutely. Was there a time maybe two months ago or so? It was probably before two months ago. But I was sitting there on my couch in the basement, eating some cookies and cream ice cream out of the gallon, going nonstop until I felt like I was going to throw up because I put myself in a food coma watching Luke Williams highlights. Maybe, maybe there was. But in what world are we doing this, Phillies Twitter account, where we're giving him this massive thank you? Come on now, this isn't Chase Utley. It's not Ryan Howard or Jimmy Rollins. That's what I felt I was getting when they put out that tweet. What are we doing? Do a better job. But those type of players play, play way too much. Kyle Schwarber's legit. He's hitting bobs. He's raking dingers galore. I wonder what they're going to do in that two hole. I really am. I'm fascinated. There's so many options. I'm fascinated with what they do with Price and Stott because we know that service time is always going to be a conversation, but he deserves third base now. The way DD has been swinging the bat too, he's my X factor. And I brought this up, I think it was on social media. And I was kind of getting ripped a little bit because I used the word X factor. And the response that I got was, no, the X factor is if the meat and potato guys that you brought in here can swing the bat and murder the baseball, that's going to be the difference in you being good or not. And obviously, no doubt about it, it's like the Sixers, Joel Embiid and James Harden. It's going to be about them, but the X factor could be Tyrese Maxey or Tobias Harris. That's the guy that adds a secondary layer to what is special about your group, to what your brand of baseball is going to be. Didi sliding in the uh, the, the batting lineup at a 7 or an 8 at that type of rate who can maybe give you 20 to 25 bombs. That's the X factor on how far you can go on how much harder it is for the pitcher to roll through your lineup where 8 can be Didi Gregorius who seems to be significantly different from what we saw last season and same with JT. I don't want to simplify things too much but I think an area of this could possibly be one word. Health now that they're actually 100%. Now, I didn't like the way that DD went about it last year, talking about the vaccine was the reason why he couldn't play the game and the side effects of the vaccine. Uh, I know a lot of guys in baseball who ended up taking it and being just fine. DD, I think you just lost it a little bit last year. I think you just weren't good. I think you had a down season. Majority of major leaguers, if not every major leaguer, you can look at the back of the baseball card and see a season that sticks out as as a sore thumb, as if it's way worse than every other season that you have. 
especially when you get older. That's the nature of the beast. Let's see if you can perform and bounce back. Instead of blaming vaccine, this, that. No, how about focus on your game, get back to being healthy, get back to seeing the ball properly. And right now, it, it seems like he's in rhythm. He's in groove. Basically, everyone. I can even throw Camargo. We can point out to me. Mickey Moniak? How long have I crushed Mickey Moniak? Well, let's be realistic. We started this in 2017 or so. Pretty much since the day my man got here. We annihilated him and ripped him apart because there were times where he looked completely overmatched and let's be real. The Matt Klintak era is dealing with a lot of players who you know suck, if we're being honest. I don't know what Mickey Moniak is going to be. But knowing Odubel Herrera scenario right now and knowing the franchise wanted to do a platoon in center field, Vueling has earned a chance, no doubt. And he's a right-handed bat. Mickey Moniak play in center field. I'm not going to tell you that he's going to stand in that box and do what he's doing now against the New York Mets in their rotation, against the Atlanta Braves, right? Because it is going to be completely different and there's such an insane massive jump that's going to occur i'll use the same logic to bryson stott right now i'm jumping up and down going bonkers watching him get three hits in a game watching his defense and just watching his approach and how smooth he is in the box his swagger there are a few pitches that i feel are over the plate that he lets go and gets by him but that's part of it seems the bryson stott experience as he figures out what's going on in that current at bat at the time but even there are some pitches when it's oh one or oh Oh, two, and he works it to one two. There's a there's a pitch I feel over the middle of the plate that he should drive, and he just fouls it back. Maybe he's anticipating a fastball. It's an off speed pitch. Timing's off, but it's like God damn, that was one where you could really set that on fire and rope it down. Wh- whatever line, maybe you go to the opposite side if that's what it's uh you know allowing you to do. We saw that in today's game. F- uh, fighting off pitches, battling off pitches, goes to that third base side. All right. Hide, use all of the field. I love it. So there are times like, ah, I could have had that one. But then he earns a walk anyway. Base is loaded. You can definitely be insanely aggressive, maybe too much. You want to drive the baseball so badly, you get out of your comfort zone. But against Toronto, he earns a walk with bases loaded. I value that little stuff. Think about being a younger kid. You're in the bigs. You're getting a chance. You know your name is somewhat being surfaced within a real opportunity to start at third base when the season begins on opening day. And what's going on? You're earning a walk when I know in your head all you want to do is crush it. All you want to do is make great contact, barrel it up, put it through the gap, or even try too hard to smash a homer, and now you're striking out because you're just putting too much emphasis on it. Nope. I'm willing to give Mickey Mooney. I feel, just like I said, Matt Veerling has done, even in his limited time last year, and then the start of spring training now, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the noise is all about. I'm not going to tell you I'm living and dying on Matt Veerling, but I feel that there's been enough generated how do you do based off of his play that I will see. Well, because we know they want to do a platoon in center field and Oduble was going to be that option, and right now he can't be. Let's see what Moniac's got. This This is the highest his high has been. We've seen moments flashed. We've seen power here and there, but this is the most we've kind of seen the biggest rise this has been the biggest spark this has been the loudest noise is there something he could do by taking this and running for it is this the best little excitement we'll ever have out of mickey moniac is it going to be a us falling flat on our face because the moment he sees real big league time he gets too much adrenaline and too much emotions towards it where he'll just never be able to perform I don't know but this is the best I've seen Mickey Moniak to this point and you know 0-2 count driving it to right field off the wall and I mentioned this on the last show too as much as I give him living hell over the years there's something to be said when he actually connects and when he gets going and he fully sees that ball and, and does some nasty things. It's, it's kind of a beautiful swing. It's kind of a really nice cut. It's actually appeasing to the eyes.